First of all, my congratulations to uh, the organizing team, Dr. Madhusudan, for such a wonderful meeting uh, on pediatric liver transplantation. Um, Dr. Patel has already uh, discussed a lot about the medical management of hepatoblastoma and has uh, made my job much easier. And uh, Dr. Pamecha is uh, going to talk on uh, liver transplantation uh, for hepatoblastoma, uh, uh, again covering a lot of aspects of it. Uh, so now, uh, when we talk about the surgery, so surgery remains the mainstay or the curative treatment for hepatoblastoma. Uh, could be low bar resections or extreme resections, liver transplantation or if nothing then palliation. So which is the subset of, this, uh, of the patients that we are talking about uh, in this uh, subgroup which is the extreme resection. These are patients with pretext 3 disease which is involving either the main portal vein or its bifurcation, hepatic venous confluence or the IVC or the, the post-test uh, 4 disease. And this contributes a small number around 10 to 20 percent of all the patients. Uh, now definition for extreme resection, are not, uh, not a uniform definition but some of the, the terms which could be combined together in the form of aggressive resections which could be ex situ resections with autotransplantation, uh, resections uh, with cardiac bypass, resections with a future liver remnant less than 25 percent or ALBS. What is termed as difficult resections uh, are uh, again extended resections for pretext 3 or 4 disease with a very close relationship to the essential vascular structures. In this subset uh, most of the times uh, the disease is dissected off or you can say peeled off uh, either one of the major hepatic vein or uh, portal vein. Complex resections are the same extended resections with added vascular reconstruction. Now uh, and as has already been discussed about the role of neoadjuvant chemotherapy, so this group of patients whether uh, which is pretext 3 and 4 across all uh, different form of classifications from Americans, Germans, uh, European as well as Japanese comes under a high risk or very high risk group of patient and all of them should receive uh, preoperative or chemotherapy. This is an interesting study from 2014 from uh, with Dr. Venkata Ramani uh, wherein they studied 20 patients uh, at diagnosis. Uh, the pretext stage only uh, four of them which is the uh, the ovals here, I have a pointer. so uh, only four of them were resectable. At, the, at two cycles of chemotherapy, 13 of them were resectable and at four cycles of chemotherapy, 16 of them were resectable. So only four patients uh, remained unresectable. Uh, so what is important is the uh, when we, it comes to the treatment algorithm or the decision making algorithm, it's not just the disease at presentation but disease uh, or radiological examination again at the end of fourth cycle of chemotherapy uh, is extremely important and is uh, the, the time point for decision making. This also gives uh, time for a planned transplant uh, in this uh, situation if, if this child requires a transplant. Uh, a transplant can be planned after the next two or three cycles of chemotherapy wherein additional cycles of chemotherapy with additional uh, uh, toxicities whether it is autotoxicity or cardiotoxicity can be avoided. What is important uh, to note is that a considerable of hepatoblastomas, uh, the hepatic and the portal venous uh, uh, involvement was also downstage uh, with chemotherapy. The second aspect of uh, decision making is the significance of resection margin. So uh, uh, when we, dis as already discussed with Ivan's classification or the, the American approach, what was mandatory was at least a 1 centimeter tumor free margin uh, when we are talking about upfront resections. But when they, the, they evaluated the, uh, the significance of this margin especially in post chemotherapy or post neoadjuvant chemotherapy patients, uh, definitely macroscopic residual disease is a negative prognostic factor but microscopic uh, residual disease was uh, not thought to be a, 
uh, of significant adverse effect in a lot of studies. Uh, having said that, uh, this is an interesting study coming from TMS only, wherein uh, the, this is not for pretext 4, but pretext 2 and 3 patients who were evaluated uh, with multifocal hepatoblastoma. Uh, in, the, in 10 patients, the satellite di lesions disappeared, whereas in 4 patients it persisted. In this subgroup, in the 4 patients where the disease persisted, those sections were completely resected. But in the group of patients where the satellite lesions had disappeared, in uh, uh, seven of them, the affected segments were resected, but in three of them, the affected segments were not resected. What is important to note that uh, in this set of patients the, in which the affected segments were not resected, the, the disease recurrence within the liver was much higher than those where it was resected. So that again brings in uh, that margin negativity could be an important aspect. Uh, one more aspect which is not studied so well is uh, patients who have got a suboptimal response to chemotherapy. So when we talk about the biological behavior of these tumors and you would uh, want a, a log 3 or a, at least a log 2 reduction, means at least two zeros or three zeros falling off their AFP values, there is a subgroup of patients where you would see the alpha fetoprotein still smoldering in say 30, 40, 50,000. Now, in this subgroup of patients, is, is, is margin positive resection acceptable? That's debatable and we don't have actual data for that. Uh, now, coming to the different uh, aspects of extreme resections, as I discussed in one of the previous slides, when we talk about extreme resections with uh, cardiac bypass, now these are, most of them were, uh, uh, were diseases where a right hepatectomy was done along with uh, uh, either resection of the IVC or a right atrial tumor thrombus. Again, as uh, you can see that there have been anecdotal cases, total I could locate around 11 cases were reported, of which only three of them did well. Uh, again, one of them required uh, liver transplantation for ischemic cholangiopathy. Coming to ALBS, uh, again I could locate just one case report. Uh, this was done in a patient again with a right, uh, right lobe tumor extending to segment 4 wherein the, the future liver remnant post-resection was very low, 21.2 percent. This patient had a staged uh, ALS procedure uh, with increase in the FLR to 30 percent and had an uneventful recovery. Again, the long-term outcome of, uh, of these patients have not been described. Uh, two important uh, uh, series which have uh, uh, kind of uh, looked at, specifically at extreme resections, which is in post-text 3 and post X 4 comes from Germany and Chicago. So this is the German series wherein they had uh, over a period of more than 15 years, they had 29 patients uh, in their post X uh, 3 and 4 hepatoblast tumors. Uh, only two of them had a primary liver transplant. Uh, the distribution of them, pretext you can see there were uh, 16 of them were pretext 3 and 11 of them were pretext 4. Post treatment, 21 of them were pretext 3 and 6 of them were pretext 4. Surgeries, most of the time, was uh, a trisectionectomy. Two of them had cardiac bypass, two had uh, IVC resection and anastomosis. Two of them had, uh, sorry, one of them had portal venous uh, resection and anastomosis, and three of them had hepatic venous uh, venoplasty. Again, uh, this group, uh, these surgeries was done by a single surgeon over a uh, long period of time and the surgeon had an experience of more than 100 liver resections or pediatric liver resections before they took on uh, this kind of resections. Complications, yes, one patient required uh, perihepatic packing for diffuse intraoperative bleeding, postoperative uh, grade 3 or uh, complications, almost 6 of them. Looking at their survival, uh, their event-free survival was 62% and overall survival was 80% at 5 years. Uh, in this study, uh, they described that the factors which would favor resection would be uh, a good response to new adjuvant chemotherapy is a must, complete resection uh, is a must and uh, in all of their patients they achieved a R0 resection. Uh, they used uh, uh, very good imaging modalities, uh, including segmental volumes, so that they had a very good idea of their future liver remnants as well as the vascular relationships before they attempted these resections. 
the patients where they were against resections were multifocality beyond the borders of anatomic resections uh, if the FLR was low or if there was unfavorable vascular conditions. Similarly, uh, the, uh, the German, uh, the US series from Chicago again uh, answering the same question which was pretext 3 and pretext 4 patients a total of 23 patients again more than 15 years 8 of them had primary liver transplant because the disease was not amenable to resection one of them had progressive disease and hence was uh, uh, not uh, considered in uh, their follow up 14 of them had aggressive resections one with cardiac bypass and uh, no, but none of them had a vascular resection you can see that uh, a good uh, survival in this series with uh, overall survival at 1 year, 2 year and 5 year being 93, 91 and 88 percent and the event free survival at 1, 2 and 5 years being 93, 91 and 75 percent of the time. Uh, coming to uh, the Japanese uh, 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 approach, we heard Professor Kashahara and we saw the beautiful videos of his uh, resections. Uh, for them, uh, uh, what uh, this this is they have a step by step or an algorithmic approach to such patients with advanced uh, stage hepatoblastoma all of them would receive chemotherapy patients who continue to be pretext for after chemotherapy would go ahead with a living donor liver transplantation only uh, uh, pre post text 2 and 3 disease with a sufficient uh, liver volume again would be considered for resection uh, with a good preoperative or intraoperative imaging and a major vascu a main vascular uh, invasion is considered as a contraindication to resection. If you see uh, their survival, uh, their survival with transplant was much better, an overall survival of 100 percent and an event free survival of 91.7 percent. With resection the overall survival was 91 percent and event free survival of 58.3 percent. Uh, uh, we discussed about the, the, the FIT trial, maybe a lot of uh, uh, evidence may come from it uh, for future. They have defined there is a definition for extreme liver resection uh, in the categorization of FIT trial and these includes any resection with a vascular reconstruction whether it is hepatic venous, IV, portal venous, IVC or hepatic artery resection. Uh, conventional resections with wedge resection uh, from the future liver remnant. Again, uh, we have a small experience from Tata Memorial Hospital where uh, the patients who were not affording or not amenable for a transplant and we attempted this, but uh, given extremely poor results, we have given up uh, this kind of resections. Low FLR or if there is more 180 degree or more encasement of the remnant hepatic vein or portal vein. And the indications for liver transplant are major vascular invasion for unifocal pretext 3 disease or encasement of all hepatic veins, retrohepatic IVC or tumor thrombosis or encasement of the portal bifurcation or both the right and the left, multifocal pretext 4 disease or metastatic disease at diagnosis with clearance of metastasis with chemotherapy or surgery uh, are considered for liver transplantation. Uh, this is uh, one of uh, the largest series uh, of the SEER database really, uh, review and you can see that the, the, there is a move uh, towards more and more transplantation from just 8 percent of the patient in 1998 to 27 percent of the patients in 2016. Uh, I think uh, primary versus rescue transplant uh, uh, Dr. Pamicha would be discussing so I have not uh, uh, taken much of the time in that. So, in summary I can say that uh, a radical primary resection is a must for curing hepatoblastoma. Extreme resections can be done with good outcomes in carefully selected patients uh, where a high chance of radi radical resection seems achievable though the, the evidence is, is very, very uh, of very few cases and we need more studies uh, as for a robust data as well as follow up. Uh, liver transplantation is increasingly being used and offers a chance of radical resection with total hepatectomy for these tumors which were otherwise not resectable. Though it comes at a cost of lifelong immunosuppression, higher cost of treatment and sometimes donor challenges as well. Uh,
thank you for uh, your patient listening